Today, we're going to help you defend your city by using commanders like Charles Martel, Esong, Sun Tzu, and more. So stick around in this video for equipment and talents that you can just freaking copy to keep your city safe just in case you get rallied or swarmed. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiscool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And I cannot believe that when I issued a poll to all of you, my community, that two thirds of you have not even set up a city defense. Maybe you got commanders, but you don't have equipment and you don't have freaking talent set up. So I'm gonna give you stuff you can copy. And I did the hard work of thinking through a lot of things, and I will give you some details and teach you some stuff about the game that you might not have known. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, join the 180,000 people that are hyped to freaking get value and smash their enemies with daily uploads about Rise of Kingdoms. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for smashing the like button. And let's freaking get you prepped. First and foremost, I have no disillusions about trying to uh, encourage you to take rallies that you can't freaking handle. This is the crisis preparation, the emergency preparation, so that when something goes sideways, and I'll explain a few scenarios, that you are ready and you're taps away from just swapping your equipment, swapping your build, and you're like, let's freaking go. So you can focus on the things that really matter to get your city ready. So... What are the situations where you might find yourself needing to defend your city? First and foremost, you may think, I'll never be off Alliance territory. Well, a couple things to consider. First of all, you can teleport onto territory that doesn't belong to your coalition. You could do that by accident. A lot of people, including content creators, have done that and been rallyable, didn't realize it, and their rally is already on top of their city before they realize what has happened. And this happens to a lot of people. I'm not, this is not a call out to any one person. This happens to a ton of people, okay? So you could get caught out accidentally. But even if you don't think that's possible, even if you think, I'm way too cautious for that, just cool. Well, let me tell you, we in Kingdom 254 and many other kingdoms will sometimes imprison their victim before the flag underneath their city has burned. Now, for those of you that don't know, in many contexts, having a flag under your city makes you unrallyable. This is true in KVK, especially in Season of Conquest. But what we will do is right before the flag is going to burn, right before they've poured it away, we will imprison you. So we don't even wait until the territory is gone to imprison you. We can't rally you just yet, but hey, we'll rally you seconds later, okay? We imprison you before your territory is gone. We catch you, okay? We will catch you. So if you cut it close or you don't know about this, just, just take my word for it. You should make a preset, okay? So make your presets, and the first thing we have to do is talk about what commanders are you going to use. Now, everybody has access to Charles Martel, and if you haven't unlocked Charles Martel in KVK Season 4 and beyond with a bunch of skills onto him and put the relic onto him, okay, the museum buff, which my museum's hiding all the way over here, this is super worth doing to just use the currency to put the, the museum buff onto your Charles Motel, and then you can use him to defend your city. Even if he's not expertise, even if you don't have that many commanders, he is a great option to have available to you, um, especially if you've taken him to the max level. Why is that the case? Charles Martel is a great primary because his active skill will go and enhance the damage that you deal, which means that your next commander to fire off an active skill should do some big damage. So Charles Martel is is a great choice as a primary. And I'm going to assume you have an Esong, okay? So you can set your wall with Charles and Esong, and that's a great place to be. If for some reason you didn't have Esong, then you could also swap in Sun Tzu and use him as the secondary. Or if you're like, hey, Chisco, cool. my account is very young. I don't have a level 60, the Charles Martel. Then you could use the Sun Tzu as the primary, the Charles Martel as the secondary. And in case you haven't ever visited your wall, this is where you go to set your captains. Now, I have some pretty advanced captains here. Today's video is not about really fancy talents on commanders like YSS and Theodora. Today's video is about helping folks who have no interest in these sorts of commanders or have interest but never would actually commit the sculptures, right? So Sun Tzu, we're going to look at Esong as a primary. And in fact, let me talk about that now because there's a funny thing here. In fact, if we look at my restart account, let me show you this exactly. Unlike in my main account where I've spent almost $100,000 on the game, this account has spent a itty bitty fraction of that amount of money and is a much younger account. So on this account, I don't have nearly as many commanders, although I have some damn good stuff up near the top here. 
Even my Charles Martel is not expertise yet, but I do have other commanders that are expertise and very strong. So if I'm just taking a rally on my city, and all I need to do is prepare for that, not just not taking a swarm, just a rally. Well, in that case, freaking Esong with Skippy Prime, I think is a better option than trying to use my unmaxed Martel with Esong, weirdly enough. And some people are like, whoa, but that's like archers with infantry. But remember, for defending your city, you have all your troop types present. You're not trying to march anywhere. You don't need to have one troop type. And you just make sure you have a talent build that doesn't require you to have one troop type. We'll go over those builds. So for defending my restart account, if my city gets rallied, I am going to absolutely wreck people with YSG. Yep, you heard me correctly. Swap off the Charles Martel here. We're going to go with a YSG primary who, oh, he's my secondary. So I'll put in the Skippy over here, the YSG primary. And actually, we could wreck some people, okay? And I'll talk about exactly why that is a little bit later when we're talking about talent and how you would handle a rally. This is pretty legit. Now, although this might look a little crazy at first, let's walk through the other situation that you might get in trouble with, which is if your city is getting swarmed. And this is often the case if you get imprisoned. Kingdoms that are understanding how to use, or that do understand how to use an imprison properly, will swarm you. And they are going to lose some troops, but they're make you lose even more troops. If you're about to get swarmed, then commanders like Esong, which are generating a lot of rage and do lots of AoE, that's nice, but you might even be silenced a lot. In that instance, I would really steer you towards using Charles Martel, a commander that, okay, you know, I, I, I get that, you know, his kit's not all that sexy, but... Giving yourself shields and counterattack is really good, especially if they have a lot of guans hitting your city and you're not even using active skills all that much. Having just lots of counterattack is really good. Charles Martel really does get elevated if your city is getting swarmed. Even though you would think it'd be a commander like Esong, at that point, your goal is just to kind of survive the imprison. And so Martel is slowing down the pace of the fight. So if my city were to get swarmed over here, I actually would still use the unexpertise Charles Martel over the Skippy because I really want to have that extra survival to just last as long as I can. So once you've knocked out what commanders you want to have on your wall, now you can go look at that commander and start to put an equipment preset onto them. Now, I don't want you to switch to this preset. It's not an active preset. I want you to have it available so that when you need to hit the O button, you just boom, you flip to the equipment you've already put a lot of thought into, you hit switch, yeah, it's annoying, it messes up your other presets, but you don't care, you're in a hurry to save your city. Alternatively, you can be patient, wait till your other marches come home, swap off their equipment, switch into this one, if you have the time for it, but you might not. So, what do I recommend if you are defending your city? And you want to figure out what is your best set of equipment. Now, anything in a preset is better than nothing, but if you start to micro-optimize here, there's a lot that you can go and do. First and foremost, you actually kind of want to look for set bonuses. Now, set bonuses are really powerful for defending your city because you can see here the infantry set is giving me 3% troop defense. That's not infantry troop defense. That's all troop defense. That means infantry, archers, cavalry. And yeah, I have a lot of siege units on this account um, just from passive training. So all of them get that huge boost in stats. So if you have legendary equipment, getting these set bonuses is a big W. In addition, you want to try to then prioritize getting equipment that has Iconics. Iconics add a small amount of boost to the base stats. If you can swing it, then it is nice to try to find a configuration that has Iconics, especially when we look at accessories. This is because the accessories Iconic boost all troop types, infantry, archers, cavalry, and siege units. This is a truly meaningful boost. I think if you have to prioritize getting more stats, or getting more Iconics, generally you would want to have more stats with the exception of these accessories. I guess there's not a question of more stats on an accessory anyways, but um, you want to go for the more stats because the Iconic is only boosting the one troop type. Um, and uh, okay, so do stats, but I think that the stat boost generally is a little bit bigger in terms of how much punch you'll notice than the Iconic boost. But let me know down below in the comments if you have a different opinion there. The last thing that you want to try to look at is shifting the stats if you can away from attack and toward health and defense. So although it's not ideal that the two-piece infantry bonus I'm getting here comes from this particular weapon, um, getting all those stats over here, you know, the 12% of defensive stats, three for each troop type, is really nice on the set bonus, so it's worth it. But if you can find situations where you can find more health, 
Um, this is particularly true with a bunch of cavalry equipment has a lot of health. For example, I'm using the set chest over here and the set boots, and that gives me 3% health to all troop types. That's a big win. Um, that's the sort of stuff that you want to be doing. And I'm even using an epic over here because for, you know, this account, I don't have a legendary. I just don't have any iconics on, a, you know, a, a lag. So I'm going with the Revival Greaves because if I'm using Esong as the primary, I'm going to get extra stats over here by virtue of having an Archer Talent. All right, so get this equipment in place. And if you want to see what I have on my main account, which I think is nearly perfect and I've put a lot of thought into, here's my YSS. This is my leftover equipment. Now, most people should not have leftover equipment. You pretty much should have what you need for your open field marches and maybe a set on... Uh, commanders for rallying barbarian forts, but but there shouldn't be a lot of leftover equipment. This is, these are my leftovers because I have more than uh, five sets of equipment. So I have my canyon team equipped. I have my leftovers over here. Here is what my perfect configuration looks like. Going for just tons of raw stats and lots of set bonuses. Weirdly enough, these two items, the hope cloak and also uh, the eternal light pants are just really easy to get and give a ton of stats up to lots of different troop types, which is very, very good if you're defending your city. This is like a shockingly good piece of equipment for defending your city. Obviously, leadership special talents would be even better here, but you can see I'm just reusing equipment. There's no special equipment I'm making to go and do this. One thing I will call out, if you are going to get swarmed, and we'll talk more about this later, is that gaining rage is irrelevant. Um, and you'll see why, I'll talk through that. Um, but you're gonna be getting so much rage just from each march hitting your city, that if you were to be getting swarmed, you take off, the horn over here, it does almost nothing for you. Um, in fact, it does literally nothing for you unless for some reason they pull off the majority of the marches that are swarming. Anything more than like five or six marches swarming and this thing is completely irrelevant. But we'll talk about that more in the talents. In fact, let's go to talents now. There's two talent builds I want you to have ready on a Charles Martel. And even if you just take one, I'll consider that a win, okay? But here are the two builds I think you ought to have on a Charles Martel to be ready for your city potentially getting into a tough spot. The first is, am I going to get rallied? This is a very conventional, safe, I don't think anybody's gonna argue with this as being just a decent all-around build if you're going to get rallied on your city. Most people would just snap this build off. They don't even, th they don't even think about whether or not it's a Tilla Takeda. They just are like, here's my build, okay? It's fine if you get swarmed. Um, it's not overtuned, but it's fine. And um, it's not amazing against Attila Takeda, but it's fine. Now, the reason I say it's not amazing against Attila Takeda is you have a lot of anti-skill damage here. That does literally nothing for you. So if you wanted, you could put those talent points other places. And weirdly enough, there's not a lot of good places to put those talents otherwise. Because you might think, oh man, but what about these talents in the infantry tree? Well, look, these talents in the infantry tree are actually not very good for defending your city. They only benefit your infantry. So one talent point gives you 1% of goodness. Whereas over here, one talent point gives you 2% of goodness. Even though it's a half a percent of stats, it's for all four of the troop types that are in your city. So what I would do is just carve off. If you knew it was an Attila Takeda, you kind of carve off these points over here and you can smash them into just these raw stats in this tree over here. Might seem dumb, but I actually think it's the best place to go. I really don't like having medicinal supplies because that is healing your troops, which means you're bringing troops back into your fights to overflow from your hospital and die. That's a big L in my opinion. So we're trying to avoid that. Shielding from Martel, good. Healing when you are, are using active skills seems bad to me. So we want to avoid this talent. I do like this over here. Testudo formation is very good. Um, so this is a talent build you can just copy. If you don't want to think, you don't want to think about Attila Takeda or not, Fine, you use this build, it's good all around. Um, and I think very few people would argue with this build. This next build though is really crazy. And it's because most people don't actually understand how rage works in this game. And I will explain just a tiny amount, just what you need to know to understand that if your city was getting swarmed and you wanted to stall for as long as possible to survive and imprison, and you had a Charles Martel, this is what you have. It's the best that you got. This build is actually really good. And you haven't seen a full garrison build in a long time because it's just really weird. It's so uncommon. Now, why am I recommending this crazy thing over here if your city is getting crazy swarmed? The reason that this build is so good is that you are carving off points 
that we're doing nothing for you, and most people don't even realize they are doing literally nothing for them. The way that rage works in this game is that you get rage when you attack something, and you get rage when you are being attacked. And you don't need to have any talents to get rage when you are being attacked. So if your city is getting full swarmed by 12 marches, you are getting the maximum amount of rage per turn. So this talent over here that people love to get is doing literally nothing for you. This talent over here, which people love to get, is doing literally nothing for you. And this talent over here, which people love to get, is doing literally nothing for you in a situation where you are just getting crazy swarmed and you're imprisoned and your goal is to just survive the freaking onslaught. So even though there are talents along the way to divine favor, which most people don't even know what this does, it gives you a shield. Even though there are talents along the way to this that do nothing really for you, boosting your watchtower, that's some BS, does almost nothing for you. This talent over here doesn't even work when you're defending your city, but you don't even care. Because this talent is so good, you're like, okay, this is worth it. Why am I saying divine favor in this instance is worth it? Two reasons. First of all, there is no internal cooldown on this ability. I confirmed with the support for the game, which means that this can trigger every single turn if you were lucky enough. With 12 marches hitting you and a 10% chance to trigger, that's pretty decent. That is a lot of survival power. You're trying to live long enough and stall <laughs> to survive the imprison. That's exactly where you want to be, okay? The second reason that I like this is that along the way, you're also getting Know Thy Enemy, which is freaking amazing if your city is getting swarmed. Normally, you're happy to get 1% uh, of goodness for a talent point. That's really good. 1% damage dealt or reduction for one talent point is really good. This is 9% of goodness for three talent points. That's really, 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 really good. And by the way, you are very happy about some of these points that are along the way, which are boosting all troop types. So this is actually the build I think you would use in a true panic crisis scenario where you know you're just getting swarmed, okay? Um, if you were to get rallied and then a follow-up swarm, right? Like you're you're probably looking at this build over here. This is a safer build, right? If you don't want to think, you don't want to overtune. This is just a very safe build. Um, but if you know you're just getting swarmed at this point, um, and you just need to survive, if you can take two seconds to already have this build, you hit switch and uh hold on for dear life, clearing your hospital, okay, as fast as you can, just smashing the button to clear your hospital. Um, whenever you're out of combat for that one or two seconds while getting swarmed. This is a thing you can do. Again, this is not something you should start with. This is this is a thing that you swap to in a true crisis, hold on for dear life situation. All right? Um, it's an option. Most people will just stick with this and call it a day. But if you didn't have Charles Martel, what do you do? Well, for those of you that are newer to the game, um, of course, Sun Tzu is an option here. Here is the talent build that you could use if you're defending your city. This is an old school build. Classic. Works very well. Very versatile. It's not overtuned for like, oh, is it Attila Takeda or not? It's just safe build for defending your city. If you knew it was Attila Takeda, it, you could switch to something like this. The reason is that these points over here, reducing the skill damage you take, are doing literally nothing for you. If you don't think they're going to swarm you, you could uh, start to overtune the build a little bit, really, really narrow your focus on just dealing with the Attila Takeda rally. You could do this. Um, I mentioned Attila Takeda because it's the most common thing that people are rallying with. Also, if for some reason you're not getting rallied by Attila Takeda, if you wanted to use a reset, you could carve off the points over here from Iron Spear. If it's not calves, okay, then those three points could go somewhere else. Might feel like slight overtuning. If you've got the presence of mind to make a few switches like that, I think it's not the worst. Like a lot of people use Pakal Herald, and I don't think it's that good for rallying a city, but you just drop those into some raw stat points over here, okay? And that'd be a pretty good way to go if you're using Sun Tzu or you're in the super early game and you're not running around with Sun Tzu in the field, or if you do run around with Sun Tzu in the field and you're going to make him the primary for defending your city and you're going to panic swap the talent build, this is a great build to have ready to go. But there is one more talent build, right? I mentioned that if you were getting rallied, okay, like if my restart account was getting rallied and it's just a rally, they're not going to swarm me. I'm comfortable with the fact that they aren't going to swarm me. I'm really comfortable then what I would do is that freaking E song with Skippy, okay? That's what I would do. And I am going to wreck so many people with AOE. I don't think they know what's going to happen. I don't think I know what's really going to happen. But I think it's going to be freaking spectacular. And by the way, I have seen this before. 
not with Skippy, but with Guan and Isong defending a city. I'll remind you of that video at the end. I'll have a card up at the top now, but I'll have a card in the end screen as well where Guan with Isong does some freaking emotional damage to the people that are trying to reinforce the rally. Hundreds of thousands of, of, of dead troops with, the, with AoE damage. So I know this works. And Skippy, I think, will do better than Guan. So uh, well, I think it would. Maybe, maybe it would. I think it would. But anyways, here's the talent build that you're going to use on the Isong. For the emotional damage city defense build, it's this one right over here, okay? This is your emotional damage, Esong, punish the rally. It's really punish the, the reinforcements build. If you're going to use an Esong primary and some crazy stuff going on, like with your secondary, it's going to do high damage. Um, You may think, well, what about, you know, Esong primary with Guan secondary? That's bad because Guan's skill damage is reduced as the secondary. And you may think, well, why not use Guan as the primary? Well, I don't like that because he doesn't have talents that, that are designed for city defense. These talents over here are a freaking god tier, man. I mean, 15% skill damage taken reduction for three talent points. is It's just stupid how good that is. So I think you want one of these commanders, to a garrison commander, to be the primary. Um, and I think the Isong Skippy, again, is going to inflict some emotional damage on some folks. I'm not saying it's a great, a great garrison. I'm just saying if... In a crisis, you were defending your city and you have what you have on my restart account. This is what I would have to, to really punish people that are trying to hit my city. Okay, That's that's what I would do. Uh, and if you get some reports with this, okay, let's make this popular uh, and see some reports. Definitely, I want to see the pictures of those reports because I want to see how it goes. Okay, Now, I want to remind you that you should not try to get in these situations. I want to remind you that you should try to avoid this and just use a peace shield because if somebody is teched up in season of conquest okay and you're not you are in big trouble the the amount of tech that i am going to have on my main account rallying someone who is not spending a bunch of money on tech I mean, it's just going to be out of freaking control what, what i'm going to have in a rally i got a ton of extra stats you, you can't handle that i'm even to have extra troop capacity so if you can avoid taking the rally you probably should all right uh, but if you cannot avoid it, I think that these talent builds and equipment will help you. And if you found this video helpful, do me that huge favor of throwing a like on the video. It supports the channel tremendously. Thank you for your support. And in the end screen, two videos you're going to enjoy. One is like a montage from that KVK I was describing where there was just insane stuff. But a Guan Yi song did some freaking emotional damage. That card will be in the end screen. And also, I'll have a full playlist in this end screen if you want to just go off the freaking deep end on all my videos about defending your city, including what's the protocol for when my city gets imprisoned, like, you know, rallying a barb fort to get your low-level troops out of there, all that stuff. This video is too long, but the full playlist of goodness is going to be in the end screen. Thanks for watching.